Welcome to Golden's Gone Wheelin'. In this episode, we leave Lone Pine to drive up the canyon to Cerro Gordo Ghost Town, where we take in some sights of the well-maintained and refurbished buildings, equipment, and findings. We meet Brent, the owner of the town who gives us directions and advice for descending the eastern backside canyon that takes us right down into Death Valley where we explore one of the largest Joshua Tree forests known as Lee Flat. We cross over the eastern mountains where we discover amazing campsites before crossing the rugged southern end of Saline Valley and making the treacherous climb up Lippincott Pass. We push our luck over legendary washboard roads racing the sunset to get around the north end of Racetrack Playa past Tea Kettle Junction, but can we make it? Come along for the ride and find out. Quick update. So after Alabama Hills, we checked into a hotel to clean ourselves up after so many days on the road of camping and stuff like that. And thank God we did, because the winds last night at about midnight, 1 a.m., cranked up to 20 something miles an hour and it was crazy you could hear it just howling from the hotel room in fact one of the ghost towns we wanted to check out today the winds up there right now are about 40 miles an hour so things are blowing around pretty good here but we stopped off at this little tiny lone pine market right here in lone pine pick up top off our roto packs with some water so we got enough water for the desert and we're gonna go ahead and head out into the Death Valley area and tough out the winds and see how it goes. As things are supposed to die down, the wind is supposed to die down today, this afternoon, to about half of what it is. Right now in this town, the winds are about 15 miles an hour, so that would be like seven. We'll go for it. We'll see what happens and then we'll update you guys along the way. So we actually stopped here, to, to, uh, which is right at, the, right at the highway and the start of the trail on the way up to Cerro Gordo. And we ran into this cool couple from Germany um, that are here. Uh, they, apparently they watch the Cerro Gordo uh, YouTube channel too, which is really freaking cool. And these guys were awesome, but have fun guys. So I don't know if you noticed it, but the sign at the start of the road said the town was closed. But Mark and Inga had been exchanging messages with the owner of the town who said any time after 11 o'clock would be okay. So although the sign was still up, at around 10.45, we went ahead and headed up the mountain. The drone just flew right into the cliff, just when I thought I was getting the hang of it. Some of the guys that work at the ghost town actually flew by us as I was picking up my pieces. So I figured we'd just book it to the top of the hill and uh, meet them at the ghost town. Uh, yeah, my wife Noelle is ripping up this shelf road. I think I'm gonna be a passenger more often. Says, check in at the flag. Flag up there. Here we go. What do you think, guys? You like ghost towns? 
Pretty cool, right? What do you think, Kai? Huh? Got to be unleashed here. Sorry, girl. Can't just go wandering. The town of Cerro Gordo was first established when silver was discovered by Mexican prospectors back in 1865. The town was the silver thread to Los Angeles, and several thousand people lived here. The mining here shut down in 1938, which started the decline in population. We spent a couple hours in Cerro Gordo exploring the buildings and looking at the huge collection of mining artifacts and old tools. I noticed several of the buildings still had old glass in the windows, and I asked Brent, the owner of the town, how much of the glass was original. He said he had not replaced any of the windows. I was amazed at how well preserved some of this old town was. Some of the buildings were residents for people working on refurbishing the ghost town. The main building, where they have you check in for a quick do's and don'ts discussion, also serves as a small store where you can buy books about the town or purchase souvenirs to help support the restoration. Directly across the way is the original American Hotel. There are many pieces of old mining equipment, some old vehicles, and a lot of artifacts that take you back in time. You can just imagine what it must have been like to live and work up here in the canyon. Brent even set up a movie theater where you can take a rest and watch some of his documentary films on the town. All right, so Cerro Gordo was pretty freaking cool. And then I found out not supposed to video here. So if you can get up to Cerro Gordo, man, the ghost town is awesome. And they're actually building a freaking hotel here. We're going to try and head down the back side of the canyon here, which is supposed to be more difficult. But I talked to Brent and he said it's passable in our Jeep. So we're going to give it a shot and head that way into Death Valley. Uh, he gave us some pointers on which roads to turn on and things like that. Super nice guy. Shout out to Brent from Cerro Gordo. It was time to head down the east side of the mountain toward Death Valley via Cerro Gordo Road. All the other vehicles that came up the hill that morning turned back and headed back down to the highway. We were told this way could be rough, and frankly, I was kind of hoping it would be to spice up the adventure. We would be taking this all the way down to White Mountain Talc Road. The scenery was amazing. I kept feeling like I was in some old western movie or something. actually wasn't too bad. There was a lot of smooth areas, but then there were some chunky spots where there were clear washouts and rocks that had been exposed. There wasn't any real rock crawling to be had, but there were a few boulders to navigate as we went down the mountain.
As we got down to lower elevations and popped out of the mouth of the canyon, you could really feel the scenery change. I mean, we went from trees to desert and Joshua trees in a matter of just a few short miles. We got to this fork at the bottom of the road where Brent told us to take a right. He said there really isn't much to see to the left. So we took the right turn and now we're getting ready to head down the lonely road and into Death Valley. As we made our way around a few turns and up over a couple of rises, we emerged into this giant Joshua tree forest. Noel and I had never been down this road before, so we didn't know what to expect. This was a big surprise. I was blown away at how green things were. This is a desert, right? Hey, so we're not getting very far because I can't stop stopping to record video and capture some of this stuff, but it's pretty awesome. So we're at this place, you can see plenty of Joshua trees. This is actually called Lee Flat. And this is perhaps one of the largest Joshua tree, Joshua tree forests in Death Valley. And I gotta tell you, it goes on forever. Over the horizon that way way down to the mountains that way. Got some snow-capped stuff over there on that side of the valley. And this is pretty damn cool. So, awesome adventure. We were heading south toward Darwin Plateau, but we stumbled on a road that turned left across Leaf Flat. It wasn't on any of the maps, but we took it anyway, and we started heading east towards Sailing Valley Road. We took off to the east out of that Joshua Tree area on Sailing Valley Road and we came across this view. Holy shnikes. That's the bottom of Death Valley down there from up here. This road takes you out to Sailing Springs. I think it's a little bit of a hike out that way but we saw that there were a couple of campsites out this way. It's a little bit windy right now. We're going to check out two campsites. So that view was looking south into Panamint Valley from the South Pass. We were going to head north into Saline Valley through the canyon. So we made it up to that viewpoint and then we decided to take a left turn towards Saline Springs coming down this way because we saw one of the campsites we wanted to check out were down here. It's pretty cool. The road's pretty steep and nasty, but there's a creek flowing right along it here, which is pretty cool. So it's clearly spring fed, but I think there's a few springs down through this canyon that we're descending through. Pretty steep canyon. And uh, every once in a while the spring fed creek crosses the road, which is kind of cool. And I think the first campsite we're looking for is right on this creek.
going towards Saline Springs and we found this campsite right here which is kind of cool got this big rock wall up here on one side it's a little more exposed here than I was expecting I thought thought this campsite would be deep in that canyon with the creek flowing through but if we wanted to we could keep going down the canyon that way we're just trying to make up our mind right now whether we camp here or push on sunsets about seven something so 740 so we've really got like four hours of somewhat daylight left before sunset so it might be worth it to push on a little bit decisions decisions it's always tough you want to make sure you got a good campsite for the night and it's so quiet here listen got to watch out for rattlesnakes and stuff here we got the dogs can't let them get bit either and they like to be able to go have a place to wander around and play and whatnot chase each other play tag so yep we'll figure out what we're gonna do next steps <laughs> so literally just stumbled across another amazing freaking campsite here and uh, it's one of those moments where it's like still mid-afternoon and you're going oh man do we skip this one and go on and get some more exploring in or do we stay here and take advantage of this amazing spot where you're completely sheltered uh by this wall of rock from any breeze or anything it's perfect out here uh i mean death valley's a big place so we'll see what we can find and i love to explore so just a note if you ever come this way there's some smooth patches like this. Yeah, a lot of it looks more like this. So, just a note. So yeah, road back there, chunky monkey, man. It's crazy. And we're about halfway across this valley right now, from side to side, cutting across. We came down from that canyon way up there in the distance. This over here, it's an amazing view. All I can say is this place is massive. And this is only one of the basins in Death Valley. And it is enormous. So we're, I think today, trying to get over the top of those mountains right there. There's some campsites and things like that over there too. And it's getting pretty warm. This is the weird thing. It's only like, what's the temperature out? 70, 77. 77 degrees out here. But it feels like it's freaking 90. And I don't know if that just has to do with the desert of where we're at, but yeah, we, uh, dogs are getting plenty of water. We're drinking plenty of water. They get out every once in a while and have some fun, but um, they've been, every time we let them out, they're basically just wanting to kind of lay in the dirt and <laughs> cool off <laughs> and uh, just lay in the shade of the Jeep. Pretty funny. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it, but the trail we just came across is right down there in the valley. Way, way down there. What we're about to do now is called Lippincott 
Lippincott Canyon. And that is one of the more difficult passes, I think, out here. We'll see when we get to it. You know, these, these trails change with the weather, depending on what's been through here winter-wise and stuff like that. So, oh, yeah, <laughs> Lippincott Canyon is <laughs> supposed to be somewhat difficult. So that's where we came from, way down there. Woohoo! I don't think it's super technical, but it's steep as hell. And narrow. And, uh, very narrow shelf road. Uh, yeah, and it's a long way down. White knuckle material. <laughs> So I think we made it up to the top and of those mountains and it's funny and on this side the sign says Lippincott Pass 4x4 high clearance no tow service caution pretty interesting <laughs> anyway uh, pretty cool found this pretty cool campground I mean as you can imagine there ain't a soul out here it looks like there's eight or nine spots here um some of them are kind of tucked in behind this hill over here in the shade uh which is kind of nice you know and those actually believe it or not look a little bit smoother um, the ones over here little chunky rocky surface so if you're putting a tent down the dogs you know they usually just lay on a comfort or a quilt type thing inside the tent so we usually want to give them as comfortable a spot as possible now we're just making a decision do we want to head all the way to the playa I don't know if you're allowed to camp on the playa here like you are up at like Alvord Desert and Black Rock Desert, but um, it might be protected area or something like that here in Death Valley. So it's a bit, it's quite a ways. I mean, you can kind of see off into those mountains in the distance, those kind of border the north end of the playa. So it's going to be a little bit of a drive, but now we're on pretty smooth dirt road. Well, smooth-ish. Some of it's kind of washboard and stuff. Uh, Dog's finding a snake. Cooper, Kaya, come here. Let's go. Come on, babies. Um, so yeah, now we're just gonna figure out what to do. Yet. Where do we want to camp? Because it's about 5:30 now. Um, so we got two hours more of daylight still. We've covered a lot of ground today and seen a lot of stuff. There's these big lizards out here. They are massive. Um, what is that lizard called again, Noel? I think it's a chuckwalla lizard. Chuckwalla like, lizard, I think. I'm not 100% sure. Chuck Walla Lizard. I'm gonna look those up when we get home because they are freaking massive. They're huge. We're gonna try and get over to Hidden Valley, which is on the other side of this valley. We'll drive up and around the playa, I think. So if there is any camping on the playa allowed, we'll find out, but it sounds like it's not. They want you to stay on the roads here in Death Valley. Somebody said there was really good campsites in Hidden Valley area and it was sandy, which is kind of cool. Find a smooth spot. 
spot on this road to save my life. No vehicles on Playa. So there you have it. <laughs> we won't be camping on the Playa tonight. Unless there's a spot where you could pull right up to it, set up your tent. You never know, right? And But this one, this one really sucks. No dogs. What the deuce? Oh well. Anyway, so if you've never heard of this place, Racetrack Playa, this is the place where they have the rocks that seem to defy physics and go scooting across the playa and leave those tracks. This is the most washboardy road ever. And I'm like aired down to 15 PSI right now or something like that. Okay, this is funny. You guys gotta check this out. As we pulled up to this, the dogs actually barked at it. <laughs> Hi, what's the matter, girl? I don't know. Lots of shiny things? She doesn't bark at anything. What is it, Kaya? It's okay, girl. Look. Come here. Come here, sweetie. Look it. It's okay. It's okay, sweetie. Tea Kettle Junction. Racetrack. Oh, 395 Junkie. Racetrack, oh, six miles, Hunter Mountain. I think we're heading towards Hunter Mountain, actually. What'd you say? 395 Junkie, that's cool. Fly Fisher, 530. Yeah. He, lives, he lives in our area. Right on. That's cool to see these guys out here. People putting their stickers on them. Mountain Man Adventures. Uh, Johnny Taco. Oh, where's Johnny Taco? It's on the same one. Nice. This guy just left a beer bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Voodoo Ranger, at least it's a decent one. Oh, this one's cool. I like that mosaic. Oh, you know what? I've seen somebody else post that mosaic one before. That's pretty cool. Hunter Mountain Road, impassable, wow. near crest, 6,600 feet. Mud, snow, big puddle, toy, Tacoma, 4x4. Four four. Good to know. That was on 321. Yeah, 427 is still true. Oh, Hunter yeah. Mountain Road. I don't think we're doing Hunter Mountain Road. No, I don't think we are either. Well, I don't know. Maybe we are. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> That's cool that people left a note here about the roads being impassable. It's a cool little no. spot. No. Please. Almost makes, just makes me wish I had a tea kettle. Oh, it's a snake. Where? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is genius. Rubber snake. Cool well, stuff. Like the tire chad. Yeah. <laughs> tire part of a tire bead. I that might have been a total a, blowout. I had a tea kettle. I know. Pretty cool, huh? Now we've got <laughs> Washboard Road back to the south of this valley on the other side of the playa. And apparently, man, fingers crossed, there should be some good campsites there. If not, we'll figure something out. quick update so we headed down the area where the warnings that we read and the and the kettle said the road was impassable i think we probably could have made it except for one thing we ran into two land rovers coming back away from that area and they were dead in the middle of the road the lead land rover they look like pretty new rigs his rear control arm it's really a tie rod is what it is because it's independent rear suspension. The bolt had come out, so his wheel was flopping around all over and he, could, he was dead in the road. And he tried to fix it, but he screwed the bolt into the aluminum knuckle thinking that would clean the threads out and all it did was gall him up. And so when he tried to back the bolt out, it snapped off. That poor dude, man, we are a long ways from nowhere. And fortunately he's there with a buddy, right? In another Land Rover. So hopefully they get out of there okay. Um, it looked like, again, he was moving, but that wheel is a disaster. Hopefully they get out of there. So we ended up coming all the way back around the playa, back to those campsites that I shared with you guys earlier. 
we're going ahead and set up camp here tonight. We'll get a bonfire going and uh, actually go ahead and cook some stuff on the fire tonight. So that is the current situation. Um, and look, we got some beautiful flowers blooming right next to our campsite here. Pretty awesome. We just missed the sunset because we're making hauling ass back around trying to get to a spot so we can set up camp before dark, which is always kind of nice. Cheers to a long day <laughs> in Death Valley. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Pretty cool. Oy vey. Hard to beat a cold beer in the desert. <laughs> chips and salsa too, if you want some. Oh, and chips and salsa. So we got the puppies chilling. Hi, puppies. Got Kaya with her pink collar, glowy. And Cooper with his green collar, glowy. And we got some chicken breast with cheese. That looks bad because it's not grilled yet. Oh, well, the it bread, will be when you it'll be it grilled. Over. It'll be grilled rosemary sourdough from Schatz. Oh, it's from Schatz Bakery? Yes. Nice. And then we got our asparagus brewing in the tin foil here. Yep. Pretty awesome. You're awesome, sweetie. Top it with salsa. Yep. You.